Good evening, Ospreys. Welcome to the 2021 Student Government Presidential Debate. My name is Madison Saul, and I'm the Elections Commissioner, and I'll be moderating tonight's event. Representing the Charge Party's presidential candidate, we have Selma Bersovic. We have, um, representing the Ignite Party, we have presidential candidate Rachel Saunders. And representing the Inspire Party, we have presidential candidate Lucas Riker. Tonight's agenda will include three different sessions. The first session will be a series of standard questions that the student government's Office of Elections submitted. The second session is called the Fire Round, where the candidates direct questions to one another. And finally, this third session will be focused on the audience who submitted live questions via Instagram the throughout the day. Live Before we begin the questioning, each presidential candidate will have three minutes to give us a background of themselves and their questions platforms. Via Instagram. On the, audience. the order for tonight's event will be tonight. the alphabetical order of the parties. So we will begin with Selma from the Charge Party. Timer, please get ready. Selma, you have three minutes starting now. Hello, everyone. I want to say Dobro Doshli. It is a very exciting day for me today. Uh, it is actually Bosnian Independence Day, and I am Bosnian, so celebratory day for that. And that is what will get me into continuing on with my introduction. I am a first-gen college student with immigrant parents, and that is a big reason why I want to be involved with student government and be a student leader. I want to be that person that helps people who were in my who are in my position that I was once in that felt like they were always a step behind everyone else that didn't know where to go or who to turn to. That's why my party is big on diversity, uh, not just that physical diversity, but diversity of thought as well. It's the idea of we're all human and we all come together because we want success for one another. We are a family, we are all ospreys. So with that being said, I actually want to install a First Gen Connect said, program, which is part of something that's very important to me. I want to be the voice for students that I feel like they have no one. At the end of the day, I love helping people. And that's why my party in, uh, engulfed this three branch idea for our initiatives. You, your home, and your future. You is about representation, inclusivity. Being a first gen college student and a transfer student like myself, I don't feel like people in my same position have the same opportunity as someone who has parents who've went to college or even UNF specifically or anyone else for that matter. Your home is about making UNF the most it can be for you, instilling programs that can help you succeed academically and get involved and mm -hmm. make your years at UNF the best they possibly can be. Because at the end of the day, you are a student here, you are granting the university funds, it should function the best as it can for you. And then your future is about making UNF a home, not just for us, but for everyone else. I wanna make sure that Jacksonville is proud of its local university. And it's not just seen as a commuter school, but as a university that we have great alumni connections to that I can say I went to school with that student, that I've met them in class or in passing. And the idea that, again, human is human and I wanna take charge and be that person that instills all these changes that can really make every student succeed. Thank you. Thank you, Selma. Next, Rachel, you have three minutes starting now. Hello, Ospreys. It's my greatest privilege to introduce myself to you. My name is Rachel Saunders, and I'm running for student body president. I'm happy to have my friend, your chief of staff, Emily Echevarria, as my running mate. Emily is a junior studying art history and political science, and she is both a first-gen student and a transfer student. I'm a junior studying psychology, a sister of Alpha Phi, and I have a kitten named Alice. She might make an appearance during this because she likes jumping on counters. Over the past three years, I've fallen in love with this university, with the campus, the opportunities, and the community. I'm a UNF student to my core. I know this place and its people. I never planned to run for student body president. I didn't ask parties if I could run with them at the beginning of my first full semester at UNF. I didn't come to UNF looking to make a name for myself or to rise to the top of student government. I joined to find a community and to make a difference on campus. And now I find myself here. I took the time to learn about student government and what it can accomplish. I've sat in the meetings, sat on the committees. I spent the last year and a half developing the skills and the knowledge needed to be president. I've even gone beyond student government. I've met with state representatives and senators to advocate for sexual assault prevention bills and the preservation of bright futures. I have served as a senator and I worked my way up to Senate president. And I know that there are ways I can make UNF safer, more inclusive, sustainable, and fun. Every bit of my platform is realistic. I will never promise something I can't deliver. I'll never promise contracts with airlines or a 24 hour library or anything else I know that we cannot afford. I understand student government's budget intimately and I know what we can accomplish with the money entrusted to us by students. For example, 
We wanna bring you Lendwing satellites so that you can have access to food at all times in diverse locations. We're gonna to continue to make the Skies program, student government's new shuttle system, an efficient and useful program to help keep students safe. We're gonna work with dining services and student affairs to make the Boathouse a more appealing hub on campus. In fact, I've worked with the past two administrations on that, so I know that I can make it happen. We wanna establish new student government funded scholarships that aid students in the Jacksonville community. We wanna create a plan for solar energy to present to the board of trustees. But most importantly, we want UNF to be fun. We want you to be excited to come to campus every day and proud to say that you are a UNF student. We have the experience and know what students want, but we are also committed to continue to listen and learn what you guys want to see change at UNF. I am honored to be a part of the UNF community and I hope that you will trust me with your vote. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel. Next, we'll move to Lucas. Lucas, you have three minutes starting now. Good evening, fellow Ospreys. My name is Lucas Richter, and I'm running to be your student body president. I served as a student government leader for three years as both a justice and chief justice of the judicial branch. During my tenure, I chaired the Parking Appeals Board and the Student Government Scholarship Committee. Through this work, I had an inside perspective on how student government can better serve us all, and I strongly believe we must improve in three key areas. The first is student engagement. Student government should be all in on engaging with every community in our student body. That means being more active on social media that we actually use, like Instagram, Twitter, and even TikTok. Previously, the SG president provided a monthly update through your UNF email. For an update that impactful, it is important that the whole student body should be made better aware of what's going on. We wanna build on that and add daily and even weekly progress reports on all of the initiatives that SG is working on. This also goes hand in hand with making our students aware of resources available to them. Sometimes the solutions to our problems already exist and knowledge about them unfortunately doesn't. Secondly, we need to increase funding for our clubs. Diversity is at the forefront of many of our students' minds. And yet any real action on improving campus diversity has been ill-received and poorly planned out. Diversity means getting the entire student body involved regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, major, grade level, or extracurricular activities. Improving diversity first means making sure all opportunities on campus are equally advertised and available to all students. Under our administration, we will make sure every student is aware and involved in what student government has to offer. It takes better access to funds to make this happen. By increasing the club funding board limits to 700, from $750 to $2,000 and limiting oversight on the dispersal of that money, funds will be more accessible for our student body and provide more opportunities for students to feel involved. And finally, ever since the start of COVID, student fees have remained the same, if not increased. And yet our students are receiving much less in return. Many professors are ill-equipped in making the transition to online classes. And yet it is the university's job to make sure they are getting the support they need to teach our students. Decreasing the cost of education for our students is a multifaceted effort that includes revamping the SG Scholarship Committee to make scholarships more accessible and effective and working with administration to move towards a $15 an hour minimum wage. Overall, we wanna put money back in our students' pockets to ensure they're getting the most out of what they're paying for. Inspire is ready to get it done and your vote is important. Vote Richter Boston if you wanna see experience and concrete changes on our campus. Because after all, this is a campus we all share. Thank you, Lucas. So that is the end of our introductions. And now we're gonna move on to the standard questions. The first part of the debate, candidates will have a minute and 30 seconds to respond to the questions. So the first question is, how do you plan to make the university a better place? Salma, you have a minute and a half starting now. Thank you. Oh, where do I begin? Uh, that's the reason why my party engulfed the three branches. There's so much we want to tackle that if we just broke it down to three main ones and achieved one by one each branch, we can succeed. Making university a better place is what I like to apply to is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You need that physiological need to be successful in order to achieve everything else. So the idea of food, safety, water, all these things that you need in order to succeed anymore. 
So the idea of expanding Lender Wing, you know, uh, putting composting at the university, because I have seen and been told several times by students that work on campus that if food isn't sold, it is thrown out. And people will tell me and have told me, you know, the financial reality of it. And the reality is, coming from a bigger university, is that we have more funds than a lot of other universities do in regards to ratio with the population. I came from UCF and we had the same budget of 4 million accommodating 70,000 students. We still have 4 million accommodating around 17,000 students as of fall 2020. So the idea of making composting available, having a residence hall garden in order for students to grow their own food, having that community, having that involvement, pushing student leaders to reach out to organizations like BSU, LASSO, ASIA, all these pre-career uh, pre organizations to make sure that everyone is heard, everyone is involved and everyone's needs are met. And then we can move on to everything else. Thank you, Selma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half starting now. Um, thank you. Um, so part of what IGNITE stands for is the three branches of IGNITE. So safety, um, fun, and inclusivity. There are a lot of things that can make UNF better. Um, you know, we're not trying to tackle the pyramids in one night over here. Um, but where we could start is starting with improving what we already have. So improving the skies program, um, adding more pilots, expanding hours, improving, improving lending, putting in new locations so that students don't feel awkward walking to the middle of student union to get food. Um, we could also add more places for students to study. Um, and lastly, add beer sales to part, party in the plaza so that um, it, it's a more fun campus. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. Of course, thank you. UNF is great already, as previously mentioned, but we can't truly be great until we go back to in-person classes. Unfortunately, we've been dealt a deep bad hand with COVID, but that doesn't mean it will last forever. We need to work with the university administration, which has done really well, and I wanna congratulate them for keeping our numbers as low as possible. But it really comes down to doing everything we can right now, while COVID is still present, to make things better for when we finally do go back to person in-person classes. That means working to continue capital improvements. The UNF swimming team has a swimming pool that is being built currently right now. Um, we also did some renovations on the uh, SU stairs, and we want to continue with those, make sure there's enough seating on campus, and make sure all of our students' needs are being met right now. And from there, I want to work with diversity, campus safety, sustainability. All of these, although seem like big tasks, are something we can do to improve campus. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. The second question is, how do you feel about the state UNF is currently in with the pandemic? Timer, please get ready. Selma, you have a minute and a half starting now. Oh boy, what a question to tackle. When it comes to UNF and the state of the pandemic, we only know what we know in the present time. And that is really difficult because we've never been approached with a situation like this before. I believe UNF is taking very well care of it and being very precautious because I completely will prioritize safety. Again, that first need of feeling secure before anything else. I wanna make sure my fellow students, my peers, my, my family of Ospreys are all safe before anything else. Of course, I want on-campus presence and I want that student involvement because you know, we're not going here for however many years just to attend class and get our diploma. There's so much more to it. So in the essence of, you know, doing it with uh, CDC guidelines of six feet apart and masks uh, and all this stuff that I hope will come back to normal and still practice social distancing, you know, one step at a time, taking away masks maybe or uh, doing social distancing and then the other one after. Because of the fact that I, UNF is seen as a commuter school and I wanna do everything we can to make it not be. But as of how it is right now, it's respectable. Do I see students on campus not wearing a mask when they're walking outside? Of course, we can't patrol every student. But it's the idea that we as a unit come together and care together as we all should about each other's safety because if we're not healthy, we can't succeed in our academics and with our academics, we can't succeed as an adult graduate. So, yeah. Thank you, Salma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half starting now. Okay, sorry for getting kind of nervous last question. Um, I'm proud that we've kept cases so low and I think that UNF has done the best job that we can. 
Um, the student COVID focus group um, created by student body president or vice president Kayla Doherty made a large impact in communicating student needs to the board of trustees and the administration. This is something that we can continue to do as an administration. Lower enrollment unfortunately means fewer funds that are available. So we are gonna have to be realistic about what initiatives we'll be able to tackle in our administrations. Um, another huge focus of Ignite is mental health resources um, and giving COVID relief funding when we can. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. Thank you. As stated previously, I want classes to go back into person, in-person classes, but I wanna do it safely. As mentioned before, UNF is doing a great job of keeping the numbers as low as possible. But we can really vamp up um, our push to go back to in-person classes. By continuing to do on-campus testing, we have lots of students that are uh, giving vaccines to the most vulnerable in our community. And we wanna keep up with that because UNF is a community within Jacksonville, not just our own campus. And when things do finally go back to into person, no one can promise when. If they tell you it's fall, no one knows. But we can do everything we can to make sure we have a grand reopening, if you will. Make sure there's an action-packed event schedule. Making sure there's a great concert headliner to start the new year. And of course, improving market days. Making sure that it's available to every student. That it's fun and enticing and people want to go to it. So when things go back to normal and we're ready to go, we're gonna make sure it happens in the best way possible. Thank you, Lucas. We'll be moving on to our third question. The third question is, how will you work with President Szymanski to achieve students' desires? Selma, you have a minute and a half starting now. Thank you so much. I'm already on the path there, um, not uh, contacting Szymanski, but I have reached out to uh, email today, actually, Ruth Lopez and interim provost, Dr. Ka uh, Karen Patterson, because of the fact that I want to make sure students needs are met, especially those that don't know how to communicate them, that don't know how to reach out to them. I have friends, you know, first gens as, as myself, and you kind of find that unity within each other and just being that gateway to make sure that they know they can get their needs met. For example, I had a first gen call, she didn't tell me today, we didn't know that SG provided free green books. And it's stuff like that, those small things that we can help advertise more, talk to Szymanski more about, you know, allowing more, maybe green books can be provided by the professors. I'll be like Scantrons were with that initiative that they had in SG a while ago. The idea of working hand in hand together to bring that school spirit back and that campus involvement and making UNF proud of one another. Uh, I see basketball games and I work every time that they have them and soccer games and I love supporting students. It's just the fact that we need to market to each other and build that unity and really emphasize on some landscape about making sure we follow CDC guidelines, being safe with all this pandemic stuff going on. And currently, who knows what will happen to it, if it, if it will get worse or better, but making sure that students are heard and I will be very, very demanding you know, whether it be school spirit, campus events like Market Wednesdays, Food Truck Fridays, anything that we can get, make sure some answer realize that students come first. Thank you, Selma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half starting now. Thank you. Part of being the Senate president is that I've already begun to build relationships with administration, including President Szymanski. I've met with him in the past and I believe that we're on a good path. I have every intention of building a strong relationship with President Szymanski, um, which I know student government hasn't have a, had a great relationship with him, but I'm willing to form a relationship with him in order to advocate for the student body. But I wanna make it clear, I will never compromise the needs of the students. Um, students will always come first in these meetings. And because I would also sit on the board of trustees, I'll also be able to hold them accountable to what students are asking for. I just want to make it very clear that I am here to serve the students, not the administration. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you'll have a minute and a half starting now. When it comes to working with administration, more specifically with President Szymanski, I want to make sure that I'm representing the interests of the students above all else. I'm not afraid of to stand up and voice my opinion, and especially for what I feel is best for all of our Ospreys. We obviously want to make sure that we have a good working relationship with President Szymanski, but the needs of our students come before everything else. And if he's going to be tough, I'm going to be tougher. But that doesn't mean we can't find common ground. 
especially on increasing enrollment and working with the orientation to make sure all of our freshmen are aware of what they have and what UNF has to offer. So I wanna find common ground, but to firmly state that I'm not afraid to stand up for our students. Thank you, Lucas. We'll be moving on to the fourth question. The question is, what will guide you in hiring your executive cabinet? Selma, starting now, you'll have a minute and a half. Now, I mean. Thank you. Of course, the first things first is making sure that everyone is qualified for their position. That means reaching out to the College, uh, college of Arts, make sure we have an art student that wants, if they wanna be a graphic designer because it helps them as much as it helps us look better as a unit. Uh, the idea of finding a person who really wants to go, you know, to, to law school, be attorney general, something like along those lines. I'm not saying anything like that. I, I'm looking specifically for it, but it's usually typically that's the way it works. But at the same time, my first primary thing is this is what you're doing and it's gonna be selfless. It's not a resume builder. I, I can read people and tell when they're just, oh, this is what I want to do. No, what do you wanna do for the students? How will this help you in helping the students? How are you going to be a student leader and lead? When it comes to positions as treasurer, as attorney general, of course, a business major or a pre-law major would help a lot. But when it comes down to the end of it, I, I will hire a student majoring in communications for treasurer or student majoring in computer science for uh, attorney general, as long as it means that they have this passion and passion can't be taught, it, it can't be faked. It's the idea that you are here for the students and you wanna help them the most you can. It's about the idea of being that person that they come to when they need, need someone. It doesn't always have to be the president. It can be anyone in SG, any Osprey at the end of the day. It's Ospreys before anything. Thank you, Selma. Rachel, you'll have a minute and a half starting now. The most important thing that uh, comes to me when it comes to hiring cabinet members is that they're dedicated to serving the students. I'm also looking for someone who has ambition and drive. Similarly to how I selected my senatorial candidates, I'm looking for people who will get things done and make a positive change on campus. Every time someone came to me asking to run for Senate, I believe Rachel has cut out. Uh, Griffin, may you please stop the time there? Um, once Rachel rejoins, um, connection-wise, uh, I will let her pick up where she left off time-wise. Lucas, we will jump to I you. Asked. Said... Sorry, Rachel, you cut out there for a minute. Okay, I should I just start over? Uh, Griffin, how much time does she have left? She has a minute left. All right, you have a minute left. The most important thing uh, to me when it comes to hiring cabinet members is that they're dedicated to serving students. I'm also looking for people who have ambition and drive. So similarly to how I selected my senatorial candidates, I'm looking for people who will get things done and make a positive change on campus. And I intend to ask them that in the interviews. I also want my cabinet to be able to do things without me breathing down their necks. I want them to have agency um, as student government members and be prepared to do things um, you know, on their own. Of course, I'll be there to help them and to guide them, but um, I'm looking for drive and ambition. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. In hiring cabinet members, I'm gonna look for three main qualities. Previous dedication to being involved in the UNF community, whether it be with extracurriculars, a dedication to education. I'm also gonna look for a willingness to go above and beyond for our students. That means being there. That means going to events, not just doing the duties of the actual physical job, but wanting to be involved. And finally, I want a demonstration of leadership. Much like Rachel said, I want independent thinkers. I want a cabinet member who is willing to do things without my direct oversight because when we're all leaders, we can make a greater impact and better serve our students. Thank you, Lucas. The fifth question is, how will you try and improve campus safety? How will you try to improve <laughs> campus safety? Uh, Selma, you have a minute and a half starting now. Thank you. The way I'll improve campus safety is definitely focusing on night safety. Uh, if you may not know, UNF is probably one of the safest campuses that we have here in Florida. The lighting is wonderful, but it always can be improved. There's always room for improvement. That's one of my big sticklers. 
uh, expanding skies program, it, hopefully on the path to engaging a 24 hour shuttle system. It does run very late, but at the same time, not every student adheres to a nine to five class time job and goes to sleep at 11 p.m. There are students who work overnight shifts, there are students who need to access to vote and stuff like that. And when it comes to that kind of stuff, they need shuttle systems, local uh, contract with local city buses, because I, as far as I know, every university has that contract that allows students to have the university ID to be able to be within the community. And it's not just Jacksonville isolated. It's, we are part of Jacksonville. We are UNF at Jacksonville. And the idea of getting the Ospreys out there and making sure that they're emphasizing and engaging with the population and saying, you know, I'm an Osprey, I go to UNF and I'm proud, uh, stuff like that, so yeah. Thank you, Selma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half starting now. Since Skies is such a huge thing for the Ignite platform, I figured that I'll talk about that a little bit first. Um, in case you guys don't know, Skies is a new shuttle program called Students Keeping You Safe. It was pioneered by my vice presidential candidate and uh, Vice President Doherty. Um, essentially, the program picks up students at night and takes them to their parking lot, their dorms, anywhere on campus that they want to go. So that's one of the most important things that student government can directly do to help campus safety. We have shuttles during the day and skies during the night. Um, we can expand on skies by increasing its hours, days of operations, and hiring more pilots so that more students can access this service. Additionally, we want to add blue lights to many uh, blue lights to the flats. Many students have reported um, that there has been breaking been break-ins at the flats, and it's a unique area of campus that deserves the same attention and care that we give to the core of campus, especially with the burglaries, burglaries happening. Jacksonville is a very dangerous city. Crimes rise every year, and I want to make sure that UNF is an oasis for our students, where they never have to worry about their safety and well-being. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. Working to protect the students of this campus, I first wanna look at everything that we already have to offer to make our students safe. We don't necessarily need more blue lights. We have more than UF and FSU, which are much larger universities. We just made to, need to make sure that the blue lights we already have are working. We also need to better advertise the Safe Ospreys app. It's an app you can download on your phone and it basically acts as a mobile blue light. Students can click on the button and then a UPD officer will come to you to take you to where you need to go. That also means we can integrate the Safe Ospreys app with the Skies program. I congratulate uh, Vice President Daughtery for starting up the program. And I think it's a great opportunity for students to get where they wanna go at night. I also wanna work with the larger UNF administration to schedule classes and UPD um, circle times to make sure that students, when they do get out of class late at night, have a UPD camp uh, presence on campus. I also wanna make sure that UPD is constantly surveilling the flats. I have also heard of the numerous break-ins. Blue lights may not be the option if you're being actively stolen from. I wanna make sure that UPD is there to protect you. Thank you, Lucas. The sixth question is, what qualifications do you have that makes you the best presidential candidate? Selma, you have a minute and a half starting now. Now, when you look at me and look at my time here, you probably wouldn't say I have qualifications to be that student leader. I would say otherwise. I, I feel like I have an upper hand coming from a huge university deemed one of the biggest in America with 70,000 plus students to come and try and make UNF that bigger school it can be. Being a senator with UCF SG and now UNF SG, I find great passion. And that's, like I said before, something you cannot fake. I've done things for my sorority with Alpha Delta Pi. I've reached out to friends who are presidents of other organizations. For example, Amra um, Kaidi, she's president of MedLife UNF, and I've gotten involved with them. And, and that's the biggest thing is making sure the students are heard, serving students. And I am out here actively having that one-on-one -on -one with students and having that communication and making sure they are getting heard whether it be a little complaint about, oh, my uh, professor changed the syllabus. Well, why not install a syllabus bank so you can view the syllabus before you enter a class, things of that nature. It's the idea of passing conversation, being the conversation that you need to install, change and take charge. And that's why I feel qualified. I am that person that 
want to personally reach out, have those meetings with every student I can and make sure that what they need is heard because I know what it feels like to be a student in that position and not know where to turn to and where to go to besides crying to my mother when she did her best to support me but couldn't really guide me because she's never been down that path. Thank you. Thank you, Selma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half. I've been in student government for about a year and a half now, um, starting as a senator and working my way up to Senate president. I know you enough very well, and I know how unique it is. I know that we already have a Silas Bank and free menstrual products funded by SG, and we don't have to imitate other universities to make the UNF student experience fantastic. Um, but what my qualifications are, I, as I stated, I, I'm the Senate president. I've lobbied with state representatives and state senators to advocate for bright futures and sexual assault prevention bills. I've had the experience of having difficult conversations with people in authority positions. And I've also had the experience of balancing this job with being a student. Um, so I think I'm, I'm pretty qualified. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. Thank you. I'm qualified because I've been a part of SG for almost three years now, which seems crazy to me. Um, not only was I a student leader working my way up from a justice to the chief justice, I also actively sought out other uh, higher positions in terms of chairing the parking uh, appeals committee, in terms of chairing the student government scholarship committee and working on the parking advisory committee. So I have a breadth of experience in all different walks of life for our students. I also have a lot of time. I took all of my classes, um, pretty much all of them freshman and sophomore year. So I have more time to dedicate to the students and I'm passionate. I wanna serve you. I wanna make your life better here on campus. Thank you, Lucas. We will be going into the final question of our standard questions. The seventh question is, what do you think the toughest challenge will be stepping into office? Selma, you have a minute and a half starting now. I would say definitely that exponential hitting the ground running kind of ordeal where you're put in this position and yes, you have that trans transition period and that transition binder, but it's about being in that position where you are, you are here, you've, you've gotten elected, you're the student government president, now go do what you said you were going to do. And the idea of having all these paths and it's like, which one do I take first? albeit we're all human. So with those independent human variables where we can't control about struggling in a class that you thought would be a lot easier than it was, uh, mental health and all these things that are very difficult. I, I will admit my faults. I tend to sometimes overload my plate and take on too much at once. And then once it, that happens, I have to release, whether it be for a day or two. But at the end of the day, or at, at the end of those days, I always come back to what I have said I was going to do. Um, that, I would say that's the biggest part is juggling. Of course, it's no mere job. It's nearly a full-time job with the hours it has and the position you hold and all these scheduled meetings and what you work with the other branches and student government with for, that's the biggest thing is juggling. But I understand that while I am student government president, I am a student first, student government president, student first, prioritizing my well-being so I can make sure that other Ospreys can fulfill their well-being to their best ability. Thank you, Selma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half starting now. Similarly to my toughest challenge as Senate president, um, my toughest challenge as student body president would be bringing the university out of COVID. We're just in a really unique time right now. And I wanna make sure that we don't continue to use COVID as an excuse for not engaging with students and making programming as good as it can be. Students have so many new challenges during these times and they need more support than ever finding solutions to things that SG doesn't have direct oversight of, like the counseling center, and dining is difficult. But we're committed to finding those solutions no matter what. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. The greatest challenge I will face, much like everyone else, is making sure UNF opens as quickly and safely as possible. And in the meantime, I wanna make sure that we're preparing everything we can do to have a great grand reopening for UNF so that students, when they finally do come back on campus, feel like they've miss, been missing this their whole entire life. That means making sure that we have uh, improved orientation for our new incoming freshmen and making sure they have an event schedule that they are excited about. 
like a great headliner for our yearly concert, improving market days, moving them out to the amphitheater, getting the whole campus involved and our wider UNF community. Thank you, Lucas. This concludes the first session and, that, and we will now start the second session of questions. This is considered the fire round. Now, the Office of Elections asked the presidential candidates to submit questions for their opponents. I will direct the questions from one party to another, and you will have a minute and 30 seconds to respond. The first question comes from the Ignite Party to the Charge Party. Selma, as you know, student government held an Osprey Voice in 2015 that showed that students weren't interested in a 24-7 library. Additionally, the library is not funded by SG, but rather is funded by the ENG funds which are given to the university by the state. Currently, the state university system has told all universities to plan for at least a 6% cut in their operating budget. The question is, how do you plan to accomplish, in, accomplish instituting a 24-7 library with the already existing budget restrictions and the ones to come in the next fiscal year? You have a minute and a half starting now. Thank you so much for the question. I would say that that's where it comes to you, your home and your future, those three branches uniting. I will go ahead and bring students along with me to lobby in the state capitol and say, we want more funding. I understand it comes from the state. We deserve this. I understand and I was very aware that the funding from the library does not come from SG, but that does not hold me back from asking for the budget report and seeing where that money goes. With COVID coming to life and this life happening right now, I've realize a lot more things I wouldn't have prior to the pandemic. The fact that every person is different and they can't study at 2 p.m. because they're either exhausted from an 8 a.m. class and sometimes they need that 5 a.m. draw, or 3 a.m., whatever it may be in the middle of the night. It's simply pushing for it. I want to establish a study nook first. Having that 24-hour study nook like we had in the uh, I believe the College of Business that's really dated and old and revamping that starting slowly. I'm very much, I understand we have to build steps, but th that does not mean that I can't succeed that top step. I want to start with a study nook, move on to the library and make sure we have that in between, advocating for it, doing another Osprey voice because that was six years ago nearly. And with that being said, a lot has happened in six years. Technology has advanced. Libraries are more tech savvy. You can go there to get, get your computer fixed. All this stuff that you may not want to wait till the morning until because you have an assignment due at 9 a.m. before class, stuff of that nature. Thank you, Selma. The second question is from the Inspire Party and again for the Charge Party. Selma, considering you just transferred and have only been on campus during COVID, how do you expect to know what is best for Ospreys given your limited experience on what UNF has to offer? You have a minute and a half starting now. Absolutely. And I'm thankful enough to have a VP candidate, Daryl Boyer, who's been on this campus for quite longer than me and has witnessed these things that I haven't yet to witness. But with that being said, I did visit the campus April 2020, pr prior to even uh, officially being part of it, to see the campus as a structure without any life on it other than plants. And that's when I realized that the limits are endless. There's no quite barrier on what I can do. If I wanna do a new program, a new initiative, like we had Market Wednesdays, why not a monthly food truck Friday, things of this nature that I have these ideas, why should they be in this box, this structure when there is no structure? When the university is bare and it's just buildings and plants and leaves and, and grass and trees, we can amount to anything. We can have Market Wednesday, we can have Food Truck Fridays, we can have more campus events like Heritage Week, making sure that every continent is celebrating each day of that week, having a big massive event, putting that unity together, making sure that every student, no matter religion, ethnicity, sex, gender, sexual orientation, feels welcome, working with LGBTQ plus services, working to, with the Women's Center, the Veteran Center, making sure that every person, no matter what they are or what their story is, feels represented in some kind of way, no matter what event it is. Thank you, Selma. The third question comes from the Charge Party to the Ignite Party. Rachel, two of your core initiatives are inclusive and fun. How do you intend on making SG and our Osprey community fun and inclusive for all Ospreys? Thank you, that's a good question. Um, well, let's start with the fun initiative. Uh, it's something that is very, um, you know, well-deserved at uh, UNF. Um, as we all know, tailgates were canceled. Um, obviously with COVID, it's going to be difficult to tackle fun initiatives, especially if the campus is still shut down. Um, but I wanna start with 
um, dining options. We don't have the best dining options here. Um, Chick-fil-A is great, uh, but the slice is not cutting it, pun intended. Um, the Boathouse also uh, doesn't really have great food and it's currently shut down because of COVID. So if we could bring in a better dining option, I always say Applebee's because that would be my preference um, to the Boathouse, then that would make UNF more fun. Um, and we also want to have a local dining option replace the slice um, because when you go to UNF, you're a part of the Jacksonville community. And that's where you feel like that's where you should feel that you are. So as for inclusivity, um, there are a few different things on our initiative list that um, are to aid inclusivity. Kind of one of the biggest one is uh, creating a council for diversity at, at the student government to come and make reports and do legislation and um, kind of help represent the entire student body because let's be honest, 40 senators is not a representation of the student body. Thank you, Rachel. The fourth question comes from the Inspire Party to the Ignite Party. Rachel, given your experience as Senate president, and if you're elected to be student body president, how will you work to improve and make student government more efficient in passing bills for the student body and in maximizing the resources student government already has available? You have a minute and a half starting now. First and foremost, thank you so much for your question. Um, since I've had the experience working as the head of the legislative branch, I plan on having a close relationship with them to ensure that all of the work that they are doing continues to the benefit of the student body. I have been lucky enough to have had the ability to learn and understand the legislative process, which I think all students should have access to. As for the second part of your question, I plan on building infrastructures that have been left before me. Um, an example, I wanna build upon the SKYS program, add more pilots as I have said, and I also want to expand on Lenoing, have satellite options near the dorms, um, as well as building on Aussie's closets and adding haircuts and um, headshots to aid professional development. Um, because the process has already been started, uh, the expansion on projects like this becomes a lot easier to accomplish. Thank you, Rachel. The fifth question comes from the charge party to the inspire party. Lucas, what do you view as the most important responsibility in being president? Thank you for the question. The most important responsibility of being president is looking out for the students and listening to them, being active on social media and communicating with them, making sure they're knowing what I'm doing and what they want out of me and making sure I choose a cabinet that is also engaged with the students and making sure they're ready to do everything they can to serve them. Thank you, Lucas. The sixth question comes from the Ignite Party to the Inspire Party. Lucas, as someone who has not been as involved in student government for the past year, but still has immense knowledge on how student government works, how has student government looked to you in the past year and what would you like to keep or change about it? You have a minute and a half starting now. Thank you very much. I separated myself from student government because I had plans to study abroad. And like many students who tried to study abroad in this past year, their trip was canceled. I was devastated, but I also knew I had a unique opportunity to be more engaged with the student body and to take a higher leadership role to use my immense knowledge and my skills to best serve them. Now, over the past semester, especially in the fall, things were heated. There were a lot of election violations and in being a part of the judicial branch, I understand that process. And a lot of it comes down to making sure we're refocusing on the students. The petty squabbles of SG, although frustrating, get in the way of what really matters making sure our students feel connected and aware of everything that SG is doing. Thank you, Lucas. This concludes this portion of the debate. For the final portion, we will be taking questions that we've taken from the Office of Elections Instagram followers. Each candidate will have a minute and 30 seconds to the posed question. The first question we received was, what are your plans to improve student engagement? Selma, you have a minute and a half starting now. Thank you. And like I said before, it's about being that person that has that personal connection to students. I wanna work with the other branches in SG and making sure that whether it be all the senators or every leadership position reaches out to an X amount of RSOs, registered student organizations, to make sure those students getting involved outside of SG are being heard in what we're doing in SG to better them. 
we are there hand in hand, but there's the lack of communication. It's the idea that I want to make sure that every student's being heard, whether it be like, again, again, first gen, uh, even just first gen at UNF, it's really, really hard. Even transferring from university to university in the same state was an immense difference. I've learned so much in the past two semesters. I can't imagine transferring from, from a university or college outside of state. It's what I want to do is simply make sure every student is heard. I can't emphasize that enough. Passion is something that cannot be taught. You can be well rehearsed. You can be educated. You can also learn those things. But when it comes down to it, it's about being there and taking in charge and having that drive and initiating with students, being the one to approach them and not being afraid to get rejected because it will happen time and time again. But it's the idea of you are trying and you are putting an effort out. And obviously it can't be all on you because there are 17,000 students, but it's about working with everyone else in that organization of student government to make sure that every student is cared for and represented and make sure there are no resume builders within student government. Thank you, Selma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half starting now. One of the things that I consider um, kind of the most unique and, and I don't know, cool thing about student government is that we have the Student Involvement Center. Um, and so it's like an amazing place to go if you're looking to get involved anywhere on campus. You literally go in and you have someone speak to you and tell you about all the different clubs. And you know, it's, it's just extremely unique to UNF. It needs to be advertised more. Um, more students need to know about it. We've even thrown around the idea of having like a Tinder for clubs on campus so that you can like kind of swipe through and see which one fits you best. Um, another thing that we could do to increase engagement is that Party in the Plaza needs to be advertised more as well. Um, we also want to bring beer sales to the events, like I said. If we can't have tailgate, tailgates, we deserve an adequate replacement. Additionally, um, I spearheaded the effort to give the SED groups, um, which is the Black Student Union, Latin American Student Organization, and Asian Students in Alliance, president seats in Senate. And I want to continue my partnership and relationship with them. I also want there to be better dining options. I want to help students feel more connected to the campus too. Um, advocating for sustainable options would also help students feel like they're making a difference on our campus and helping our local environment. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. Thank you. Being more engaged with the student body means being on social media for the students to actively see. That means making sure we're reaching out to students weekly and even daily on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, you name it really improving the communication uh, branch and the executive cabinet. I wanna make sure that all students are also aware of everything that we already have to offer. That means reaching out to the freshmen early at orientation, working with the larger university to make sure that the freshmen understand of everything that's already available to them. Like the Safe Ospreys app that I mentioned earlier, a mobile blue light, the blue lights, the physical entities sound great, but if you have one that's available on your phone, that's so much better to know than to not know. And we're also paying money to run that app. Same with the, the Flowbird app for parking. I work with parking in the judicial branch. So many students didn't realize they could buy a daily pass on their phone. That's a great benefit for the students. They won't have a parking ticket and they'll feel more connected to the campus because they'll know that SG is there to look out for them. Thank you, Lucas. The second question we received was, with campus increasingly diversifying, what plans do you have to ensure every Osprey feels comfortable and welcomed into SG and on campus? Selma, you have a minute and a half starting now. Like I just mentioned in my previous response, it's about getting those student leaders involved. While we do have places where they can reach out, it's about being the ones to reach out first. Some students don't know where to go. They don't know who to look at. It's about being that student leader and taking initiative, not waiting for someone to approach you. Um, that's another reason why I want to make first-gen connect. And I, I thought more about it. It's not just first-gen college students. It's just first-gen UNF students, because even coming from university to university, there's so much to UNF that is unique, like every other university that that program could help so much. It, getting juniors and seniors to participate, be that mentor and have those mentees that they can reach out to and say, Hey, I'm here to help you. Yes, we have Swoop Scott, Swoop, Swoop Scott Squad. Wow, can't speak. Um, and yes, we have all these other things that they can reach out to, but it's about taking that initiative and reaching out to them first. It's being personable, saying, hello, my name is this. I am an Osprey before anything else. I am a student too. I am here to guide you. 
having that first time connect, working with TSU personally, making that transfer connect to emphasizing it, marketing more, because I noticed that we only market to ourselves. People in SG only market to themselves. And it's, it's, it's not our fault. It's the, it's the realization that we are a small circle and the difficulty of reaching out and it's too much responsibility for two, three people. It's about relating that responsibility onto every single individual, making sure that every student is heard. Thank you. Thank you, Selma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half starting now. Um, as I always say, I want student government to be a place that everyone feels comfortable in. Um, I'm always advocating for people to look into joining student government. I know that it can be extremely intimidating. Um, so I, like I understand, I would have never seen myself um, coming into positions like these. Um, but like I said, I want SG to have a better relationship and partner partnership with the Department of Diversity Initiatives. Um, I also want to partner with the orientation to help students learn more about the university um, and so that they know kind of what we're doing and what's going on. I want to have an SG video or section of orientation um, that can help students learn about the opportunities and scholarships we offer. We did do one this year and I think that's kind of why more students went for senatorial positions. It's kind of the biggest turnout in a long time. Um, I also sat on the Commission on Diversity and Inclusion this year as Senate President, so I understand the mechanisms on campus that work to make our campus more diverse. And I'm committed to working with student leaders, administration, and the local community to make sure that diversity isn't just something we talk about, it's something that we value and make a core part of our mission. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. And making students feel welcome, I want to make sure that we make our freshmen feel welcome to begin with, making sure when they're first introduced to the campus that they feel a part of the Osprey community. That means beefing up orientation, making sure SG is physically there for orientation for our students, and even actually having a real orientation for our transfer students. It does not stack up to freshman orientation. I want to make sure that everyone is involved, regardless if they're first gen, if they're from a more diverse background, I want them to feel like UNF is their home. That also means revamping the Student Involvement Center. Although there is opportunities for students to find out which clubs they might be compatible with, it's not the same as having in-person um, people to talk to, to make sure that you actually have a face and a voice to see, to make sure you are involved on campus. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. We'll be moving on to our third question. How will you work to ensure contested elections in the future? Selma, you have a minute and a half starting now. Of course, and I am proud to say that my VP candidate, Daryl Bohr, former elections commissioner, worked really hard to get that contested elect election the first time around this, this school year. Um, to ensure that definitely taking his insight, what did he do in his position? How can he be that helper to make sure we have that elections commissioner do the best they can. It is very difficult, I understand, especially when student involvement and engagement is so low, especially this COVID pandemic. But the idea is to make sure, again, we reach out, find students who want to get involved, make a question box, whether it be physical and possibly online as well, fixing Perch Portal, making it more accessible, fixing our website, making sure that we're allocating funds necessarily where they succeed, making sure that students can reach out and it's more available. Like, Luke has said many times that social media presence, but it's also that website presence of having a constant chat box from like nine to five. Hey, I have a quick question, stuff like that, because, you know, calling one stop a hassle never works. It's the idea of making sure that it's accessible. It's fast, making sure your home is welcoming you and ensuring you for your future. Thank you. Thank you, Salma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half starting now. Um, first and foremost, um, we'll hire an elections team that we're confident in, who we trust and who we know is dedicated to providing unbiased elections. I also want to make sure that our elections office is unbiased and that there's no question of ethics involved in the office. People deserve to trust their officials, whether it's student body president or the elections commissioner. Um, I, I also am a firm believer that a lot of contested elections come from the party chairs. Um, kind of just from the party chair aspect being one, I, I have seen an influx of students interested, but I also know to reach out to those who maybe wouldn't think to join student government. Um, and, I, and I could say that the elections office could be doing that as well, reaching out to more organizations and making sure that they're sending, you know, for sororities and fraternities, sending something in the chat saying, hey, 
you know, maybe consider running for a position, sending something at the, to the said groups, hey, maybe consider running for Senate, um, maybe even giving them like a personalized meeting, um, kind of like the candidacy meetings we do, let's have them with different organizations on campus, so they know how to get involved. I want people to see the value in student government, and I'm committed to making that a part of my administration. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. In order to make sure that we have contested elections now and into the future, I want to make sure I hire the right election team, one that is willing to be committed for a full year term. I want to make sure that the election team is on Instagram, on Snapchat, on TikTok during the entire election season, making sure they're constantly updated, not just the day before an event. I want to make sure that they are ready to put in the hours and the work to make sure that our students are aware of everything that they should be aware of. Because student government is a big operation on campus. We have a giant budget, nearly $4 million. And it's up to the students to apportion that. And they should be a part of that process. So when we let them know what they can do, then they'll want to be involved on campus and we'll never have an issue with uncontested elections. Thank you, Lucas. The fourth question we, we received was, in your opinion, what is the most important role of the student body president? Selma, you have a minute and a half starting now. The most important role would be serving students, making sure students are first, reminding yourself that this is a selfless position. Even though you are an individual in this position, you are serving it unbiasedly, unconnected to yourself and your personal goals in life being that voice for the students. Again, having that passion, that drive, that initiative to take charge and make sure that students are heard, making sure students feel welcome, safe, inclusive, uh, making sure students are comfortable at the university. This is their home. Comfort's a big thing when it comes to having a home. Emphasizing gender neutral bathrooms, expanding them, because I know there are a few on campus, but not so much accessible because again, we aren't very big on accessibility. I have a father and mother who have experienced surgeries and difficulties and I wanna make sure that it's inclusive to physical disabilities as well. Offering a golf cart system like Skies, but all day because not, not everyone can walk on their two feet all day long without in severe pain and making sure that students feel welcome in their dorms uh, or addressed by the right pronouns and just big, big on respect, making sure students are feeling inclusive, safe and moreover comfortable because when you're at home, what's the biggest thing? Comfort. And if UNF is your home and you feel any slight of discomfort, you will question your dedication and loyalty to UNF and staying here and graduating here throughout all your years. Thank you. Thank you, Selma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half starting now. As student government president, you have to be a liaison between the administration and the students. You sit on the board of trustees, <laughs> but there's no glory in it. I, I've seen it up close. Um, I want to lead honestly and with ethics and respect for my fellow students. I plan to create close relationships with administration so that I can know what's going on at UNF at the highest levels and communicate that to the student body. You represent all the values of the student body in this position, and I want to be someone that you trust to represent you at any level. Whether it's something on like the bookstore advisory council or the board of trustees or the commission on diversity and inclusion. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. The most important role of the student body president is mobilizing student opinion and bridging the gap between the larger UNF administration and the students so that their voice is heard. In order to do that, we need to make sure everyone's involved in the first place, reaching out to mo our most disaffected students, the transfer students, uh, highly active clubs like the Black Student Union, the Transfer Student Union, even our grad students that often go underlooked. We wanna make sure that everyone is involved and when everyone's involved, I'm doing my job. Thank you, Lucas. The fifth question we received was, what is your style of leadership? Selma, you have a minute and a half starting now. I love this question very much because at the end of it, I always emphasize human is human. Why am I looked up to as a superior authority, authority person? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> when I am just like you, I wanna be there for you as much as you'll be there for me. You're helping me out as much as I'm helping you out. It's the idea of hand in hand, 
we're walking this together. I am doing this for the sole purpose of you. And if you trust me enough to do this for you, you're doing something for me as well. I'm doing this because I care so much. I, I lead with example. I lead with precaution. I lead with asking questions. I make sure that I'm getting critiqued. What can I do better? What did I do bad? What should I do next time? What should I do next time? Uh, and then same to my, my peers and Ospreys. Hey, let's, you know, what can you do? Here's first and connect, go to that. Uh, I, I feel uninclusive or excluded from, excluded from SG as from the university, go to SG. They can write legislation up with, with the legislative branch. They can make initiatives to change and make sure you're involved. I wanna get involved with my major. Let's say I'm a pre-med major, go to SIC. They'll probably guide you to MedLife UNF or something along those lines. It's the idea that you are helping me just as much as I want to help you. And I lead with example, I lead with pride, I lead with joy and I lead with selflessness. Thank you. Thank you, Salma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half starting now. Um, I've been so lucky to be nominated and elected to a leadership position within the legislative branch. Um, and it's given me a lot of time uh, to really think and develop my leadership style. Uh, leadership is, is being kind, empathetic, doing the dirty work that no one wants to do. Um, leadership is being there for everyone in and out of student government, being a friend to students and being someone that they can rely on. Um, someone that I look up to personally and who I think has done a great job as a leader and who I take a lot of notes from is, uh, is uh, Ali Schneider, the current um, student body president. She leads as a normal person. She never puts herself above anyone in any kind of meeting. She never acts as if she has a larger position than me. Um, she treats everyone that way. In, in Senate meetings, she even goes by Ali because you know she doesn't care about what the glory of this position is. Um, she cares about how students feel about her and um, the connections and genuine connections that she made with them. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. As student body president, I would be an engaged leader. That means making sure I hire uh, students for my cabinet that are already leaders themselves and making sure they know they have a friend. Someone's there that not just to be there for them during SG office hours, but to be there as a friend, to give them a text to say, hey, I'm here for you. I also wanna be the type of leader that's the first one there and the last one to leave. I need to prove to my peers, and to everyone around me that I'm just as dedicated, if not more, to everything I'm doing. If now I'm not willing to do something that I'm asking of others, then I shouldn't ask them to do it in the first place. Thank you, Lucas. The final question we received was, how will you improve school spirit and pride at sporting events? Selma, you have a minute and a half. Your time starts now. Definitely with this COVID pandemic, it's been a rough approach to emphasizing school spirit. But I don't want to imitate any other university. I don't want to follow suit and follow in the shadow of any other university. It's about having that similarities to be on the same level as a university, such as my prior one, UCF. Uh, with COVID going on, of course, trying to keep as clean as possible, as safe as possible, whether it be an inflatable obstacle course, you know, that's wiped on something small, has a disinfectant spray on the sides, anything to get students active, fun, hyped for an event. It, I have friends who are on the soccer team who, are, who actually video, uh, video the basketball team and they say the turnout has became so low. And it's the lack of school spirit we have, you know, at, uh, universities have traditions with homecoming and stuff like that, yet I have failed to recognize with my two semesters here and actively searching, I cannot find the leeway to tell me what is our tradition? What is our school spirit tradition? You know, you hit the seal for, for good luck, that's with academia. Where is the school spirit? What makes you proud to swoop hard? What makes you proud to be an osprey? It's the idea that we need events on campus. While yes, it's safe, going back, making sure we're following guidelines, but slowly progressing into our new normal, but also involved normal, present normal, and making sure that we have that presence on campus. Whether it be social distance, you reserve a spot on lot 18 and that's your little spot and you are six feet away from every other group, stuff like that about making sure we're present, playing music out in lot 18 as well and all those things. Thank you, Selma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half starting now. Um, like Selma mentioned, SG has worked to instill school spirit 
with installing the SG or not, not the SG seal, the seal, um, trying to start traditions um, like that. But I think sporting events give us a great opportunity to start instilling pride at UNF. I want to work with athletics. To, that's my cat jumping into a box, just in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> I want to work, work with athletics and further develop the Osprey Rewards app that I feel like most people don't know about. Um, it essentially gives you points to go to events, sporting or otherwise on campus. Um, you can actually request Ozzy to come visit you if you have enough points, which I think is interesting. Anyways, for a while, uh, we've had a really good thing going. Uh, if you've been to a JU UNF game, River City Rumble, uh, you know that we have the potential to be a school that values school spirit. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. Thank you. To make sure students are involved and have a sense of school spirit, I of course want to make sure students actually attend sporting events, to incentivize attendance, to make sure it's fun, that students want to actually go. That means having food trucks. That means having music. That means getting the band involved. That means making sure Ozzy's there. And of course, making sure our students uh, fly hard and swoop often. That means starting with the freshmen, making sure they're engaged with the campus as uh, an orientation. I also wanna make sure that we're active on social media, making sure that games and sporting events are advertised consistently, making sure that they feel that I always have an opportunity to be on campus to do something, not just with sporting events, but other events as well. Thank you, Lucas. We will now go to closing remarks. Each candidate will have a minute and a half to say their final words of tonight's debate. Selma, you have a minute and a half uh, starting now. Thank you so much. And I wanna thank everyone for being here, especially you, Madison, for being the mediator last minute. Um, at the end of the day, I, like I said I've said several times before, human is human. And I have this drive, this initiative to take charge. I'm charged up to be this person to help you. No matter what, I, what, what the outcomes are, no matter who's elected, I hope with this debate, the leaving remarks will be, I'm there for you as a human, because there's no difference between me or, my, or the other candidates here today. At the end of the day, I really do hope that you guys vote. <laughs> Make sure to vote. We need student engagement. Your opinion matters. And you can voice it all day, but until you actually vote, your opinion inherently goes unheard. I trust you guys. Don't be afraid to reach out to me, to anyone in the charge party, because we do have this jar drive to take charge and take care of you, your home, and your future, because you are an important aspect in, in our lives. Your home is your safety and your future is where we want to see you succeed and have that alumni connection with us say, hey, I saw him on campus. Thank you. Thank you, Selma. Rachel, you have a minute and a half starting now. Thank you again, Elections Commissioner Saul. Um, I'm honored to be here and to share my plans for making UNF better. My biggest honor though has been leading the Ignite party over the past few months. Ignite is founded on the principles of safety, inclusivity, engagement, and true honest representation of students. We've done the work and we know how to make UNF better. As you've heard tonight, we have more than ideas. We have plans. We have a plan for every single one of our platform items. We're not going to try and sell you on grand ideas and accolades that sound good. We promise we will do everything we can to make them happen. You deserve leaders who live up to their promises. You deserve leaders who love UNF. You deserve leaders who respect your opinions and values. I hope you see those qualities in Emily and me, and I hope you trust the Ignite Party with your vote on March 9th and 10th. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Lucas, you have a minute and a half starting now. I first wanna say thank you to Elections for putting on this event. Um, and as student body president, I will dedicate myself to putting all issues under the microscope, making sure we have effective steps to achieve concrete matters, like lowering the cost of education, improving student engagement, and increasing funding for our clubs by leveraging my extensive experience with SG and building up a cabinet of the most dedicated and bright students, we can make sure every student has the opportunity to get the best education possible at the cheapest price. So vote Richter Boston so we can inspire UNF to swoop and soar to new heights. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas, and thank you to all of our candidates. This will conclude the event tonight. The Office of Elections would like to thank you for joining us, and I would like to highlight the importance of voting in this election and making an informed decision. 
We honor, respect, and students serving students, and we hope you take that into consideration when voting. We have three amazing candidates running here tonight, and I can't thank them enough for participating in this debate. Um, again, thank you so, so, so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, make sure you vote March 9th and 10th at the Student Union Plaza and the Library Walkway or online. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great night. Stay safe and stay uniquely UNF. Thank you.